Good evening. My name is Jennifer Marcellus. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, I'm here with a um, a lot of our team members from the Office of School Choice who are managing the chat this evening and answering your questions as they come through. Um, there will be also, as um, Regan mentioned, there will be an opportunity later in the evening to answer your questions. We do ask if you have very specific questions about your child in your child's account that you discuss that with you off that you discuss that with us offline. We do try to um, honor your child's privacy in all things. And so um, we are going to ask that we discuss that offline. Speaking of which, there is a um, you are URL code. So if you have a question that you want to have answered or if you want to have someone reach out to you tomorrow to answer your question, please go ahead and scan this or use the um, the URL code and you can go ahead and fill out the survey and this team member will get back to you tomorrow to answer any of your questions. So let's go ahead and get started. We know that this is a very busy time and a lot of parents have a lot of questions about school choice and the opportunities that are being afforded to their um, children. So tonight we're going to do a brief introduction to school choice. We're going to talk about the technology that we use as part of school choice, the different ways that you can submit ap applications, and that purely means that some parents come to us, some parents are returning to us, some parents have brand new children who are rising kindergartners, and this is all very new to them. And then some parents have existing students. And so the work that you need to do behind the scenes to get to the application process to finally um, submitting your application is a little different depending on where you're coming to us from. We're going to discuss the priorities. We're going to discuss the actual lottery and what that looks like, and then we're going to answer any questions. So for school choice, um, most parents make the choice of, a, of sending their child to their zoned attendance area school. So every residential address in Jacksonville has a elementary, middle, and high school attached to it. Or if you live in the zoned attendance area of West UK 8, you have a K-8 assigned to you. Duval County has magnet schools. We have dedicated magnet schools. That means that every child who attends that school has applied to that school. There is no neighborhood child. Everyone makes the choice to come to that school. And then we have whole school magnet schools. Those are primarily our elementary schools, and that means it's a neighborhood school. So like the new um, Rutledge Pearson, it will be a whole school magnet school. Every child at that school will receive magnet programming, the arts and STEAM, However, only those children who apply to that school will be magnet students and will have program continuity or tiered continuity going from elementary school to middle school. And we'll talk more about what that means when we talk about priorities. And then we have special transfer option schools. So a special transfer option or STO schools are our neighborhood schools that don't have a magnet program. Every school has a capacity as designated by the state of Florida. And so if a school has seat availability, if their projected enrollment is less than this number of seats they have, they do have the option of opening seats. And so we allow parents to apply for any seats that might be available at that special transfer option school. I do need to um, place the caveat that transportation is the responsibility of the parent or guardian with our special transfer option schools. And through the lottery process, there is no guarantee of placement. So let's move on to our technology 101. So we have moved to a, um, a system where OneView is our umbrella platform. It is a secure platform that provides single sign-in with access to focus, Blend in learn, blending learning opportunities, and much, much more. So every parent who needs to, who wants to submit an application has to acquire a OneView account, which will give you access to focus, 
which is where the application is. So FOCUS is our student management information system. It's where teachers take attendance. It's where they post grades. It's where they post assignments. It's how you see what tardy slips your children get. It's the platform we use if your children are absent for the day. You get, a roommate, uh, you get an automated call through FOCUS letting you know that that has happened. So you only need to get one account, but it links you to two platforms. I want to give you a brief overview of OneView. Um, in case you don't know, Duval County has its own app, and these are screenshots from the actual application. Um, so as you can see, um, on the first image with the buses, those are articles that are published by the district. If you click on the top right hand corner, it gives you a um, shortcut to your profile, how to change your password, how to add a student. So if you are a, a family member of a rising kindergartner student, student or if you, your student is coming to the district brand new, this is where you would add your student to your OneView account and your Focus account all in one step. Um, also, if your child has left the district and is returning, then your student's account has been deactivated. It is still there behind the scenes, but you will need to reactivate it, which we'll talk about a little later. And you'll need to re-link your student's account to your parent account. Now, if you use the, um, the three lines on the left-hand side, it gives you many more opportunities to um, learn about the options available through OneView. So you'll be able to go to um, blended learning, learn about the schools your children go to, your student information. Bus registration is done through this account now. Um, you can find out school lunches for the day and you can go to focus and that is where you will find the application. So as I mentioned before, focus is um, used by our schools primarily and the Office of School Choice to manage student enrollment and we do run the lottery through FOCUS. Also through FOCUS, um, there is a, um, when you're on the app and you scroll down, you can select your student and you can see exactly the number of um, tardies for the, for the semester and the grade for the semester. But also if you go to news, you can see any grades that were posted the day that on that day or any assignments that have been given to your child on that day. The planner has upcoming activities and so if your teacher has published something, you can find it there and then reports is where you'll find your progress reports or your report cards. Most of us are here today because we have an interest in applying to a school for the 2023-2024 school year. As I mentioned before, there are many pathways. Many, it's a lot of different background knowledge that parents have when coming to Duval County Public Schools. And so this snapshot will be helpful if you are, so students new to Duval County. Your first step is going to be to register your student and acquire a student ID. From there, you'll create a parent account. You will link the accounts and then you will apply to the school of your school or schools of your choice. If you are a returning student to DCPS, you will have to request that the account be reactivated and you'll do that through our email address, which is school underscore choice at duvalschools.org. There are some materials that we want you to send in with that and so we'll cover those in just a moment. You will need to confirm that you have access to your previous account or create a new account. You'll need to request that the account, the parent account be linked to the student account and then you will have access to the application. So as I mentioned, for students new to Duval County Schools, you'll go to our enrollment, our enrollment page, so duvalschools.org forward slash enroll. You will select registration new students. And then when you scroll down the, to the page, you'll see step two is register for the with the district. And here you'll find the specific steps that you will need to take in the appropriate order to acquire a student ID number 
and to link your accounts to create a parent account and to link the accounts. Now I do need to um, make people aware that this is a multi step process. So creating the student ID is one pro one activity. And from there you will either receive a confirmation number as a response in your email or you will have to reach out to our office to have the student ID number released to you. If you need the student ID number to be released to you, you can go ahead and contact us at school underscore choice at duvalschools.org with a copy of your driver's license, your child's last name and date of birth, and we will release that information to you. While you've re you've requested that information, if, if need be, you can also go ahead and create your parent account. Now we do suggest you do that in a timely manner because that account needs to be verified. You will receive an email after you fill out your components. You will receive an email back asking you to click a link to make sure that you are really um, a parent. And then there's a 24 hour hold on your parent account. Um, so focus takes 24 hours to update and that way by the time we send you your student ID number, you will have access to your parent account and then you can move forward with linking the accounts. So for first time students or students new to Duval County, this is what the step one looks like and this is um, there's a link so from from here if you um, there's on the website there's a carrot here and you can open up where it says student ID and it gives you the uh, very clear directions and links to what to do each time. So for creating a student ID, this is the information you find. There is a link and this link will take you to this document and you will need to process through this document. There are approximately 20 questions about your child. This um, portal does give you the opportunity to upload documents. So if you wanted to upload your um, birth, the birth certificate of your child, your driver's license and any documents that verify your residential address, that is always very helpful to us as we answer emails. At this time, I do need to let you know there's a glitch in the programming and parents are not able, or most parents I should say, most parents are not able to get back into this opportunity once they've logged off. So if you, I know it says that you can um, come back to it, but currently there is um, a glitch that they are trying to solve in the programming and so it's not letting you go back in. So I would suggest that you gather your documents and you'd be ready to upload them and just set aside 20 minutes to, to chug through it. Um, I will say that one of the questions is um, we ask for contact information and we do ask if that is a custodial parent um, and you need to check yes. We don't assume that because you were a contact for the child that you were a custodial parent. And so we do ask that as you're submitting this application or this um, enrollment page that you do select the contacts who are custodial parents. So that covers students who are new to Duval County. If you are a returning student, which we are so glad to have you back. If you are returning to Duval County, we have lots of parents who are moving back to Jacksonville and parents who are making different um, educational opportunities for their students. So if you are coming back to Duval County, you don't have to make a student ID number because we already have one. However, we do need to reactivate it and we need your assistance with that. So if you need to reactivate a student ID number, please email us a copy of your driver's license, the student's birth certificate, residential address documents, and almost most importantly, a copy of the most recent report card for your child. That way we can ensure that we are enrolling the child for the correct grade level for the 2023-2024 school year. If you need to enroll your child for this school year, for the remainder of the 2022-2023 school year, you can do that at your zoned neighborhood school. We have very limited seat availability for um, special transfer option and magnet schools. If that is something you want for the remainder of the school year and you're new to Jacksonville, you can most definitely come to our office 
and we can discuss those options. But if you are returning to Jacksonville and you need to enroll your child in your zoned neighborhood school for the remainder of this school year, that is something that you can do face to face at your zoned attendance area school. And then once you have the student ID number and it's been linked, the process is the same. It's making sure that you have access to your parent account or creating a new one. You can request that your parent account be linked to your student's account. And then once approved, you will have access to your um, school choice applications. I do want to say that parents don't need a parent account for each child. You can, as I do, link multiple children to one account. We do ask that you remain, um, that you keep the, the login information for your parent focus account um, separate from your child's account, just so that they don't have access to the applications. So there's that. Um, if you are currently, if your child is currently enrolled in a Duval County Public School, I will say that most parents have a parent account that is already linked to their child. Um, because we have moved this year, we did buses online and everything is much more involved with one view or focus. And so many parents do already have a parent account. If for some reason you don't have one, and I will admit that um, when my children were in elementary school, it was much easier to have them log into focus and check their grades for me. Um, we do ask that you go ahead and get an account, create an account, um, request that it be linked, and then log into your account to complete the applications. I feel like this might be a good time to ask if there are any questions about this first part of what I just covered because there was a lot and I don't want to leave anybody behind or to have any questions not answered. Um, so um, I'm going to ask the team if there are any overriding questions about um, this part of the process. And this is the most laborious part of the process. And it, there are um, there is that glitch about parents not being able to go back in and complete the student ID number. So I'm hoping with the large amount of families that we have here today. Um, so um, so if you, I see this question right now about charter schools, if your children are already in charter schools, will this negate their school choice applications? No, it will not because the systems are totally different. The charter schools manage their own lottery system and Duval County Public Schools has their different platform. Um, and so your children, just in case you didn't know, your children who are enrolled in charter schools, they have Duval County Public School um, stu student numbers. And if you don't have those, we can get those for you. If you um, complete the survey, we can get back to you with those. Um, but no, the two, um, the two systems, or actually there's one system for each um, governing board of charter schools, it does not talk to Duval County. And so there is no, um, there's no concern there. So um, Ms. Joanne just talked, asked about priorities and we're going to talk about those um, later tonight. The sibling priority is only for younger siblings or siblings who already have a child enrolled in that school. It's not for a, um, for all the siblings applying at one time. There needs to be already one sibling at the school who will also be at the school for the 2023-2024 school year. So um, for instance, my my oldest child is graduating this year, and so her younger sibling will not have a priority to that school because she will not be in attending, she will not be attending that school. My older sibling, my older child will not be attending that school next year. So there is no sibling priority there. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on from here. So the application process, as I said before, all of the applications are in focus. So families just need to again log into one view focus and this is the icon that you'll see on the Duval County Public Schools website. We usually have a banner image and then we have a smaller banner 
in blue of all these icons, and that is where you'll see the one view focus. So you'll go there to log in. And then as I showed before, you'll click on the three bars in the top left hand side. And then you'll select focus. It'll prompt you to log in again, but again, it's single sign on, so it just sort of logs itself in. This is um, a parent account on a phone, so it can be done on a phone. Um, so here along the left hand side, um, student one is here. So I've opened up that student's account, as you can see, and I can see all the grades, the attendance, class schedule. I can see all kinds of things about this child. This child is a rising ninth grader, and so there is the high school acceleration application, which those are due tonight. There is a magnet school application, and there's a special transfer option application. And so parents can make a choice to either apply to two magnet schools, to one magnet school, to no magnet schools, to one special transfer option school, or any combination thereof. So parents are limited to two magnet school choices and one special transfer option choice. You do not need to complete two magnet school. Um, you do not have to identify two magnet schools. If your heart is set on only one magnet school, please only apply to that magnet school. And if your um, heart is set on one special transfer option school, then just apply to that one. We do want parents to think um, long and hard about the school that is the best fit for their child. Jacksonville is a very um, large city by square footage, by mileage, and so there are lots of things to take into consideration when you're applying for a school. There we go. So the actual application, so this is a screenshot of this year's application. Um, we do ask that families review this information up top um, especially for things like gifted status, parent email, things like that, and just make sure that everything is correct. If you have any changes and your student is not currently enrolled in a school, then our office can assist you. If your child is enrolled in a school, updating focus is the responsibility of your zoned attendance area school or your school of enrollment. So I should probably preface that. Any, if your child is enrolled in a school, it is the responsibility of the school to make any changes to focus when it comes to your student's um, residential address, contact information, that is all the responsibility of the school. If your student is a rising kindergartner or if your student is um, not currently enrolled in a school, but applying for the lottery, then that, that responsibility falls on our office and we'll be more than happy to assist you through school underscore choice. This second bank of questions is about active military status, um, parental rights. It, there is also a question about a new student in the applicant school. So the applicant school is any child not currently enrolled in a Duval County public school or charter school. So these are for our brand new students who are coming to Duval County. This is what the application looks like. This of course is a high school application. Um, there is a notes column here on the right and we do ask the parents review that for to determine whether or not their student is eligible for that particular program. So you'll see here that some of our high schools have an Algebra 1 priority, so students must complete must successfully complete Algebra 1 prior to ninth grade, and so that's a note to parents there. When completing the application, so these um, upside down triangles or the carrots as I like to call them, they are drop downs, so you will select either one or two, and that is how you make a choice with regards to the school that you would like to apply to. And then there are some uh, statements for parents to read. Um, it, the, it does cover sibling priorities here, and it also covers something that is um, just a tad bit confusing. And so we like to bring it to the attention of our parents. So if your child is currently in a 
magnet school or a special transfer option school. So let's say that your um, fourth grader is currently at your zoned neighborhood school. No, that's not. Let's use a better example. My apologies. Let's say your um, your child is currently an STO school, an STO student. So your child is on special assignment to Arlington Middle School. If your child is on special assignment to Arlington Middle School in the seventh grade, and if you make a different choice for the eighth grade, if you submit an application for the eighth grade, your child's placement at that at Arlington Middle would be canceled for the 23-24 school year. Regardless of the lottery outcome, your special assignment would be canceled. And if you did not receive the new special assignment, your child would be zoned and enrolled in their neighborhood school. So we do, um, we hope that all families will remain at their school of enrollment through the special transfer option or magnet lotteries. So we also need to ensure that the most number of seats are available and that everybody has um, an opportunity to apply for all the seats that would be available during the on-time um, lottery. And so one of the caveats per school board policy is that if your child is currently on a special assignment, whether magnet or STO, and you decide to apply for a seat for the following year, that you automatically forfeit the seat that you currently have. So that is what um, this says here, this last caveat here. And we also, just so parents know, we assume that you want to stay at that school. And so if your child is currently at a magnet school or a special transfer option school um, and is not in the fifth or eighth grade, we assume that you want to stay there and we have already rolled over your child. And so there's no need to reapply because the special assignments are for the, the grade span of that school. So if you're in a traditional elementary school, your special assignment is through the fifth grade. If you are at a traditional middle school, your assignment is through the eighth grade. And if you're at a traditional high school, the, enroll, the um, assignment is through the 12th grade. The only difference, the only um, special circumstances are something like Darnell or Baldwin, where they are 612s. And so if you get in at sixth grade, that special assignment will wrap around through the 12th grade at both Darnell and at um, Darnell and Baldwin, sorry. And if you're at a K-8, so if you're at Johnny Ford or if you're at Westview K-8, those special assignments are K through eighth grade unless you decide to make it a different choice. So also embedded within this application is an area for siblings. So the siblings need to be residents of the same address and their addresses need to be matched in focus. As you know, the, um, the window closes February 28th and then we spend um, a majority of the month of March making sure that all of the information and focus is correct. And one thing that we do is we double check siblings and their residential addresses. And so if you are indicating to us that your applicant has a brother, sister, stepsister, stepbrother, half sister, half brother who lives at the same residential address, we will give that child a higher priority if the residential addresses are the same in focus. And so here, this is your opportunity to include the student's last name, the older siblings or the student currently enrolled in the school, their last name and their date of birth. Then you need to click save if you have documents that you need to upload. So if your child is one of the ones that needs, um, oops, my apologies. If your child is one of the ones who needs to show us that they have algebra one, you can upload that document here and then save the application and then you will be good to go. Now, focus slash SIS student information systems. It automatically generates email receipts for all parents. So please, once you have completed your application, make sure that you check your email 
for an email that comes from focus slash SIS student information systems. And that will be your receipt. Um, I know personally I've had issues where my Gmail account has been um, full. And so I have not received such receipts in the past because my email has been full. So you might want to take a moment to manage your email accounts and make sure that there's plenty of room for a new email. So again, this conversation now may have brought to mind more questions that you have specifically about your child's account. So if you have any questions this evening about the application process and how it pertains to your family, you can go ahead and scan this QR code or use the link and we will um, respond to your query in a timely fashion. So um, Joanna is asking a question about one STO. If you only apply to one STO, do you have a better chance of getting into that school than you do when you apply to an STO in two magnet options? So every year is different because we're working on the number of seats available at each school. Applicants. And so we have um, um, over since 2020, that number of applicants is rising every year. So it's not about um, which choices you make. It's about how many seats are available at any given school and for how many seats are available and how many people apply for that specific school. Um, we will talk about priorities in just a moment. And we will talk about how the lottery runs with regards to the priorities. And so I hope that that will um, make some clarifications. So Ms. Haywood, I apologize. STO, Special Transfer Option Schools. Duval County, we have magnet schools with magnet programming. And then when we have Special Transfer Option Schools, which are STO. Those are our neighborhood schools that do not have a magnet program but may have seat availability. So I hope that helps Ms. Hayward. Haywood, sorry, my apologies. There are some exceptions to the lottery and I like to talk about those first. So we have Douglas Anderson School of the Arts. They are an audition only school. If this is the school that your child is interested in, you need to reach out specifically to, to Douglas Anderson to discuss the audition process and the portfolio review process. Duval County has one virtual academy. It's a K-12. They have a separate window for applications. They have not published that information at this time. Um, those applications will be available on Focus. If a virtual instruction learning environment is something that you think would be best for your students, we do encourage you to monitor, monitor their website for updates. And of course, once you have a Focus account, those announcements will be pushed out through Focus. Um, Focus is a great way of keeping on top of what's happening here in Duval County. Um, and then thirdly, we have GRASP Academy. And GRASP Academy caters to our students who um, have either dyslexia or dysgraphia. And so their applications are available at their school because it is all assessment based. And it's important to note that that school is grades one through eight, not K through eight. So know the details. So as I mentioned before, we have magnet schools or magnet programs within schools. On the application, you may make up to two choices for a magnet program or school. With the understanding that the magnet lottery runs first. So the magnet lottery runs before the special transfer option lottery. Again, as was mentioned before, Algebra 1 is a prerequisite for some of our high school programs. If you need additional information about that, it is available in our reference guide, which I believe my colleagues have posted in the chat for your use tonight. Now, we also talked about special transfer option schools. For special transfer option schools, parents can only make up to one choice, and transportation is the responsibility of the parent or guardian. In the box are some details that apply to both the magnet lottery and the special transfer option lottery. So all applications are assigned a priority, which we'll discuss in just a moment. As I said before, parents will receive an e-receipt from Focus 
forward slash SIS student information. So that's something to look for after you've applied. The lottery results will be shared by email in mid March. I'm sorry, mid April. Lottery results will be shared in mid April. If you believe your child is eligible for the gifted programming, you can share that information with our office by March 21st. As I said earlier, placement is not guaranteed. And open seats are limited by the capacity of the school and current enrollment. So as I said before, each school has a capacity as designated by the Department of Education. We, just like you can't um, exceed fire marshal capacity, we cannot exceed the capacity as designated by the um, Department of Education. So priorities, we get a lot of questions about priorities. We decided tonight to go with the priorities for our middle school students. So these priorities are for magnet schools. They are for the middle schools, the non arts magnet schools because La Villa and Fort Caroline. They have the same priorities, but they're a little different because for those schools, students have the opportunity to audition, which we highly encourage all children to audition if they're interested in those schools, because it is a wonderful process to perform and then to have feedback from a professional in your area, and that will assist the school with uh, placing students if they do have a, get a seat through the lottery. So it just expedites a lot of things for all of us. Um, and as I said, there's a priority attached to um, their audition results. So for um, our middle schools, the magnet programs. So we'll talk first about, um, let's talk about a middle school like um, Joseph Stillwell. Joseph Stillwell is a dedicated magnet school. That means at one point it had a zoned attendance area. It no longer does. However, if a family resides in what used to be the zoned, atten the zoned attendance area for that school, then that child will have a priority two as a former attendance area preference for dedicated magnet schools. This is true for any of our dedicated magnet schools, um, elementary, middle, and high. There is this priority two. So if you live in the former attendance area, Make sure that your address is correct in focus so that when we um, when the lottery when the, not when the lottery when focus updates and we pull addresses that focus will give you that priority for your former attendance area. Now, if you're applying to a, to a school like um, Mayport Middle School and you live in that form in that current attendance area, you will be a priority one student and you would have that that priority one preference. And so that is also true for our um, elementary, middle and high schools. We do have a military dependent preference. We have a fabulous military support technician in our office and she can answer all questions military. But just know that there is a preference that you may be eligible for. Priority four is program continuity with sibling preference. So if you are going from one type of mag one magnet school of a theme to the same magnet school of the same theme. So if you are going to um, John Stockton to Springfield and you have a sibling who's going to be there next year, then that child will have program continuity if that younger child is a magnet student. And then there is program continuity preference. So that is just the same program continuity without having a sibling there. And so if your child is um, currently at Venetia and has applied to Darnell Cookman, those are program, those are the same programs. So there's a program continuity preference in there for for students. There's a sibling preference. So if you have a sibling at a middle school, so if you have a sibling at, um, I don't know why one's not going to mind right now. If you have a sibling at um, YMYW, and then you have a younger sibling who is applying to that school, 
but does not have any program continuity, then that sibling would have a preference moving from um, one school that is not a magnet school, a neighborhood school, to a magnet school, that student would have a sibling preference going to YMYW. The tiered continuity preference. So if your child has, um, is you, if your child goes to um, Loretto Elementary School, which is a technology school, but your child wants to apply to one of our um, academically and gifted and talented schools, then your child would have a tiered continuity. So that is moving from one program to another in the fifth grade, from fifth to sixth grade, then that would be a tiered continuity preference. And then the last preference you see is a signature, principal signature preference. This is a holdover from when we actually had paper applications. Of course, now we do not have paper applications. Everything is online, but the preference has not changed. So if you joined us for School Showcase Saturday and you attended a tour at a magnet school, they took attendance and they had you fill out a tour log, you will receive your priority once the magnet window closes. The schools will upload the names of the parents who att attended the tours and you will be given that priority. The priorities in seventh and eighth grade are slightly different because there is no program continuity and there is no tiered continuity preference moving within grade bands of the same of middle school. So you can only use program continuity or tiered continuity moving from fifth to sixth grade. So there is that. Um, Miss Markley family, you have a question about the former attendance area. We will be happy to look into that for you. If at the end of the presentation, you can scan the QR code, or if you want to email school underscore choice, you can email us your address and the school that you believe it's in the former attendance area of. So here we get to the nuts and bolts of the lottery. As I said before, it, the magnet lottery runs first. If you apply to both a magnet lottery, a magnet school, and a special transfer option school, the magnet lottery will take priority. And as I said before, notifications will be sent in mid-April. So I want to go over this chart just so that we all have an understanding of of what we're talking about. So in this first row, a family has applied to Strawberry Middle School and Raspberry Middle School and Green Bean Middle School as a special transfer option. So the lottery runs and congratulations, the student is placed in their first choice school. Their second choice application will be canceled and their special transfer option application will be canceled because magnet takes priority. And so we need families to realize that if they want their special transfer option, if that's their true first choice, then um, you need to weigh the benefits of applying to a magnet school because if you are seated in a magnet school, then your special transfer option application will be canceled. So let's move on to the second scenario. You, the child in question was not placed in their first choice school. So they were not placed in Strawberry, but they were placed in Raspberry, which is great because the parents believe that the, the two schools are on par with each other and they knew that they would be happy either way. In this instance, the application to Strawberry is canceled and the application to Green Bean is canceled. So there is no wait listed if you are placed in a school you are not waitlisted at either. If you're placed in a magnet school, you are not waitlisted at either of the your other um, applications. In this situation, the child was waitlisted at Strawberry and waitlisted at Raspberry, but they were placed at Green Bean Middle School. So the student will be enrolled at Green Bean, but in this scenario, the student will be waitlisted for both magnet schools and we will work the waitlists through the summer. 
Um, Jacksonville is a city with um, over a million people and people are coming and going all the time. And so we do try to work the wait lists to make sure that every family has an opportunity to be seated in their school of choice throughout the summer and to start off the year in their school of choice. So you will know, um, Ms. Haywood, you will know if you're asking about a waitlist number. Yes, waitlist numbers will be given um, during if after the lottery results come out, you will be given a waitlist number. And so that waitlist number does not change. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So I'd like to try to open up the floor. Are there any questions about the lottery and how it how it how it's run? Because there are a lot of um, misconceptions out there. So if anybody wants to turn on their mic and ask a question about how the lottery is run, I'd be happy to answer that now. If you apply to only one magnet school and you are not accepted, will you be waitlisted? Yes. Miss Zucker Marcella. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um. Could you, if possible, explain the charter school application with the magnet and special transfer lottery? I have a couple mm -hmm. of questions where the parents are asking, can they do both? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. Um, I just want to go back to the, somebody had a question about if you only apply to one magnet school and you don't get assigned to that magnet school, yes, you will be waitlisted. It's just that the, these are the scenarios we see most often is that people um, make a total of three choices and then unfortunately they're surprised when they're not waitlisted for their second magnet choice that they didn't get into. And so that is an issue that we are trying to educate parents on throughout the year. So charter schools. Um, yes, so the charter school system, although all students who are in charter schools have Duval County school numbers, each charter school manages their lottery independently. And so their lottery and how they run it and their accepts, they have no bearing on how Duval County runs it. And so, yes, you can have applications out at a charter school and with Duval County. So if you if you do that, then you need to and you get your the schools that you want in Duval County. It is um, important that you make the charter school aware that you want to cancel their application so that as we get closer to school, that information doesn't get pushed into our system. But yes, most definitely the systems are totally separate. And so um, parents are more than welcome to make a choice for either opportunity as they see fit for their child. Um, but they are, so applying to us will not boot you out of the magnet lottery. I mean, boot you out of a charter school lottery and um, vice versa, um, applying to a charter school lottery will not have any effect on our lottery because our systems don't talk to each other. So if a child doesn't get shortlisted for two magnet schools, then by default, she will be assigned to her neighbor's school. Yes, thank you. Um, main family, yes, my apologies. So if your child applies to two magnet schools and you, if you are waitlisted for both of them, your child will be enrolled in your zoned attendance area school. If you apply to two magnets schools but are not, oh, that was Ms. Gertis. Um, Will waitlist be canceled after a year is up? Yes. So if you were waitlisted last year for a school and you did not receive a seat, you do need to reapply for the 23-24 school year if that is something you're interested in. Applications are only valid for the school year in which you were applying. So Curtis family, can students be transferred to a magnet school of choice in 10th grade? Um, yes, based on seat availability. So as with um, and it makes, you know, it makes sense that as the school years go up in scale, so from 9th to 10th, there are a lot fewer seats because traditionally students, once they start with ninth grade, they traditionally stay with the school. If you are applying to one of our programs that has the Algebra 1 requirement, so Stanton, Paxson, Darnell, Wolfson, 
and the engineering program at Lee, then your child needs to be on court on program on on the correct pathway as far as your courses go. And so there will need to be a transcript review in order for your child to participate in the lottery, just to make sure that your child has the course requirements for any of those schools. Yes, if you apply to only an STO school and you don't get a seat, you will get a waitlist number. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so if you currently have an STO seat and if you are applying for a magnet spot for the, for the next school year, your special transfer option seat will be canceled. That is a correct statement. So post lottery, um, this year we will be um, posting waitlist information on your student's focus page. So you will be in your parent focus account. You will be able to see waitlist information. Your child's waitlist number will not change. Um, I will never forget my child was number 97 for a magnet school that we never got assigned to, which is perfectly fine. It all worked out, but as time went on, her waitlist number did not change, but the number that we were calling next. So you'll say, you know, next to be called is number five. Your student's waitlist number is 97. So it'll always tell you what we're going to call next and remind you of your child's, um, your waitlist number. In addition to, you'll be able to complete any enrollment paperwork requested by the school through Focus over the summer months. If you need assistance, so there are a couple of ways to contact us. You can contact us through school underscore choice. Um, you can make an appointment to schedule a conversation with a support technician. So you can definitely come to our office and we will assist you there. Um, you can make an appointment like you do with the DMV or you can just walk in. That is perfectly acceptable as well with the notation that we are busier during the lunch hour and right after elementary school closes. We usually notice an uptick. If you have a question about your parent focus account, unfortunately we can't assist you with that. We need you to go to technology and that's 904-348-5200 and they can help you um, determine how to best reset your password. Transportation, yes, magnet school, some magnet school, well, magnet schools have transportation. It is more limited in some cases than others. If you need to know the current bus routes for this school year, for the bus, for the schools that you're applying for next year, you will need to call transportation. The number is 904-858-6200. Again, 858-6200 for transportation. They are more than happy to let you know what the current bus routes are and what's projected for next year. We will have more virtual information sessions as Ms. Copeland mentioned earlier tonight. They will, this one will be posted on the um, Parent Academy YouTube page and on their, um, their website as well as being on the School Choice website. And so there will be multiple places for you to hear this information again if you have any questions or better yet, if you have a friend who is interested, friend, family member, acquaintance, who is interested in school choice, this might give them a good overview before getting started. Um, and we also will be posting a handout um, prior to Monday on the website that will also assist parents with the process. So questions for the good of the group. I can see someone mentioned that their microphone was not working. I'm going to rely on my colleagues to let me know if there are any overriding themes that I have not mentioned or anything that I need to clear up. Um, so I see one that says the pre-K one. I submitted a link for my child to link my parent account on January 4th and is still pending. Is there anything else I need to do so I can complete the VPK lottery? So um, if you haven't already done so, you can reach out to the early childhood department. They manage the VPK lottery or this evening you can you can email school underscore choice um, at duvalschools.org. Please include a copy of your driver's license, your child's last name, 
in your child's date of birth, and we can look into that for you. Um, actually, or or you can use the QR code. Um, what exactly is when you say lottery? So the lottery is actually um, Mathia family. The lottery, it's a computerized lottery. And so my apologies. When we were going through the priorities, my apologies. I should have mentioned that here. So when you go through the priorities, oh, there we go. So each school has a number of seats available, let's say for the sixth grade. And so the lottery focus says, I'm going to take all the priority one children, I'm going to shake them up, and I'm going to seat them randomly in seats. If there are seats left over when we're done with priority two, focus will shake up all the applicants who have priority two and seat those students until all the students have a seat or until we run out of seats. So I like to think of it as a ladder and we start with priority one and focus will randomly place students by priority until either all of the seats are filled or all of the students and that priority are placed. And so focus will just run down the list of priorities until there are no seats and then those children get waitlist numbers. There are some similarities between our priorities for magnet and the priorities for VPK. I would encourage you to go to the VPK website, their early childhood, our early childhood department. If you go under departments and you select early childhood, they have a whole um, tab of information about their lottery. Do I have priorities for high school? Yes, there are priorities for high school. They are in this, the school choice reference guide. Um, if you, that link was posted earlier tonight, or if you want to scan the QR code, we can send you um, that specific information. I don't have it at hand right now. So the military contact is Ms. Coven. It's Coven M. Is that correct, Ms. Abraham? Coven M? M? Yes. Is it Mary? Yes, ma'am. So Coven it's Coven M, M at DuvalSchools.org. So that's the, the school. Thank you, Ms. Curtis. So there is not a different application for gifted. So there is gifted programming at some of our magnet schools. So some of our gifted and academically talented magnet schools the principal set aside seats for the academically talented children. And they set aside seats for the gifted children. It's important to note that if your child has been identified as gifted, they are only eligible to complete the application for the gifted program. They not they may not apply to the um, academically talented program and the gifted program. I hope that answers your question, Ms. Patel. So, Mr. Michael, there are no priorities for being gifted. Yes, if you only apply to an, one STO school or if you only apply to one magnet school and you don't get a seat through the lottery, you will get a waitlist number. Absolutely. So this, so um, Mathia family, so these priorities here on the screen now, are for children moving from fifth to sixth grade. So the top list, the top um, priorities one through eight, those are for children who are entering the sixth grade. So children who are leaving fifth grade and moving to the uh, sixth grade. Do student kids in magnet schools have priority mid school? No, there are no priorities for moving within your grade band, except for middle school. So middle school, there are priorities, but for elementary, there are no priorities for moving within your grade band. Actually, I take that back. You would get a signature priority and we don't have many children move within the, the middle, within elementary school. 
Miss Abraham, do you know offhand? I'm going to say that they must at least get a principal signature. Uh, to my understanding, it's the principal signature that they that would be the only priority. OK, so the parties for first to fifth grade would be the. Um, the principal signature and I have to get back with everybody. Um, I will. Um, so I so it, I know it's definitely a principal signature priori priority, but we don't get many mid um, mid elementary school changes. Um, so I'll just have to let's see. Um, so Maine M A N E. If you will email me and anyone who's interested in having that information, I will put my email address here and you can email me and I will return your email tomorrow. Um, so students in fifth grade magnet school moving to six will have a priority. Yes, it, it just depends on if you're going from one program, if you're going from a, the same program to another or if you're getting the tiered continuity. So there's a program continuity. So if your child is going from a school of the same theme, so if you're going from um, gifted and academically talented to another gifted and academically talented school, you would have a priority five. If you're going from a STEM school to a gifted and academically talented school, you would have a priority seven. So it's all based on whether or not you are sticking with the same theme or if you're changing themes. So if you live in a zoned attendance area for a school that is a magnet school, you can go ahead and apply online just like anybody else. So if your child, let's say, goes to either um, San Pablo or Loretto or um, Holiday Hill, or San Mateo, um, any of the schools that have a neighborhood population and a magnet population, you may go ahead and apply online because it won't affect where you go to school because you'll still go to your neighborhood school, but you can apply for magnet status. And so when you move from fifth to sixth grade, you will have a magnet priority. Thank you for bringing that to, to light. I appreciate it. All right, I'm going to jump in there and short of standing up on the table and clapping and saying bravo. I want you to know school choice team dynamite information so responsive. Thank you so much parents and caregivers. I know that this was an incredible amount of information. They did an excellent job. Ms. Marcellus did an excellent job answering everything live. We had our, her backup team in the chat ferociously answering every question you have. I hope they were all answered. If not, they have given you their email addresses. Uh, if you can't get in touch with them, you are always, always welcome to reach out to Parent Academy at DuvalSchools.org one way or another. Our team, their team, we're all one big family. We know how to get in touch with each other, and we are here to help and serve you to make sure that this process is as seamless as possible. Don't want to take any more of your time, families. Thank you for joining us. As we uh, reminded you a couple times, this is being recorded and will be available for you to review uh, in February, February 1st. It will be on our website, ready to go, and you can watch it and rewatch it over and over again. All right, families, enjoy the rest of your evening. School Choice, thank you for always being an incredible partner with us. We love all of you, and we look forward, families, to seeing you again in the future at another Parent Academy course. Good night, everyone.